The Goumiers were soldiers of Moroccan nationality at the service of the French army and were formed by the French authority at the beginning of the 20th century to patrol the North African colonial territory. The formation of a local militia who knows the language and the territory was so the French could support the work of military control carried out by regular troops. Coming predominantly from the tribes of the Atlas Mountains, the Goumier were men accustomed to hard mountain life, able to face arduous paths, and were very proficient in knife combat. These soldiers worked in a squadron composed of about 200 men, often linked by kinship bonds, and they wore a uniform made of raw woolen tunics, turbans, and sandals. Their armament consisted of the ordnance rifle and a saber or a dagger, bladed weapons with which they often mutilated their victims to preserve their macabre anatomical trophies. In addition to the patronage of the colonial North African territory, France used the Goumier in both World War conflicts and in the subsequent war of Indochina. In World War II, four divisions of Goumier fought alongside the Allies in the Italian campaign, and their passage in the peninsula was accompanied by a large number of war crimes, such as murders, looting, rapes, and tortures. The Goumier arrived in Italy in July of 1943 with the landing in Sicily of the Allied forces, and immediately became the perpetrators of numerous cases of sexual violence against women. These crimes resulted in fierce clashes with the Sicilian civilian population, who often reacted with extreme brutality. Many Moroccan soldiers were hanged, others castrated, and some were disemboweled and fed to pigs as meal. During their stay in Europe, the Goumier committed many crimes, first in Italy and then on the German front in the Black Forest. But the peak was certainly reached in Chocharia in May of 1944. Between January and May of 1944, the Allied forces advancing to Rome were blocked in Lower Lazio into a series of hard fights on the front of the Gustav Line. Gustav was the name given by the Germans to a fortified defensive line dividing the Italian peninsula into two, from the mouth of the Garigliano River to the border between Lazio and Campania up to Ortona, a coastal district in the province of Chieti. The Gustav Line passed to Cassino, and it was in this small town of Lazio where the most bloody battle of the Italian campaign took place, during which about 50,000 soldiers died. The artillery's posts of the Wehrmacht 10th Army were stationed on the promontory of the Abbey of Monte Cassino, from where it was possible to dominate the whole valley and effectively counteract the advancement of the Allied forces to Rome on the only viable route. Despite numerous military attempts, including the massive bombardment of the Monte Cassino's promontory that caused the almost total destruction of the Abbey, the Allies couldn't break through the Gustav Line. Only in May 1944, after sanguinary and bloody battles, did the Allied forces succeed in their goal and in the final phase of the bloody Cassino's battle, the Goumier, commanded by French General Alphonse Chouin, were the planners of a decisive military intervention called Operation Diadem. On the unpassable Aurunchi mountain side, the Moroccan militia managed to break through the Gustav Line 
and contributed to Cassino's final conquest by the Allied forces. For this achievement, it was decreed that the Goumiers were to be rewarded by their general with 50 hours of freedom, during which they could have committed unpunished plunders and violence against the civilian population. It seems that even before the military success among the Moroccan troops on the Aurunchi Mountains, there circulated a leaflet distributed by General Juan's order, who according to some sources was reciting, Soldiers! This time it isn't just the freedom of your lands that I'll offer you if you win this battle. Behind the enemy there are women, houses, there is wine among the best in the world, there is gold. All this will be yours if you win. You have to kill the Germans down to the last man and pass through at any cost. What I said and promised to you, I'll fulfill. You'll be, for fifty hours, the absolute masters of what you'll find beyond the enemy. No one will punish you for what you'll do. No one will ask you for what you'll take. The leaflet story was never verified because no copy of it was ever found. And General Alphonse Jouin didn't undergo any trial after the war and he crowned his military career first as Chief of Defense Forces and then as a commander of NATO for Central Europe. The only certainties were the tremendous crimes committed by the Goumiers and the damage to Lower Lazio's civilian population, which was later defined by the term Marocinate. Just in Chocheria, the Goumier violated thousands of women and little girls, often in the presence of their loved ones, and acted cruelly even with males of all ages. This is the testimony of a nameless woman, one of the victims of the violence. The battle raged. To remain meant to die. We went forward in small groups to the mountains, but all the huts were already full. Then we decided to go to Valle Corsa and then to Lenola. The pace was brisk. It was getting dark. We wanted to get to the village of Valle Corsa before night. We were in the Chimote area when it got dark. We accelerated the pace, but hunger and thirst were so much. Our strength was getting less and the weakest, like me, fell behind. At a certain point, we started to hear strange shouts. I looked up and turned to the direction of those incomprehensible voices. They were the Allies. There were thousands of them in a single line, and they were just a few hundred meters away from me. I stopped. I breathed, looked up to the sky and said, Finally! but I didn't even have the time to realize anything. Suddenly, I was surrounded by those black faces. Some had rings and striped caftans. Then I realized that something bad was about to happen. I jumped up with all my strength, and I tried to run to the middle of those ugly rocks. They, they didn't even let me run ten steps. They took me and started to undress me. I tried to shout, but one of them wrapped my face with one of those rags they had on. They dropped me to the ground and then started to slap me. They raped me. I heard their cackles. I smelt their stench. I felt pain. Darkness came, but the violence continued. I was hoping to die soon. But I felt pain, so much pain. <laughs> they continued to rape me throughout the night. I remember fainting sometimes. I hoped that I wouldn't wake up anymore, but after raping me, each of them scratched me, slapped me as if it was a right. And unfortunately, those slaps often awakened me. I wanted to die, but this accursed death never came. Every passing hour, twenty or so of them abused my poor body, or at least what was left of it. It was in May. The dawn came early. I woke up freezing cold. The stench of those beasts was no more. And I realized at once that it was not a bad dream. I was still alive. 
but my soul was dead forever. My face was so swollen that it was hard to open my eyes. Death is nothing, my son, believe me. Death is nothing. La Ciocciara is among the best-known novels by the famous Italian writer and playwright Alberto Moravia. The novel, which was published in 1957 by the historical Bompiani Publishing House, was written by the author in the 40s when he was living in a small village of Ciocciaria where he had sought refuge from the war with his wife, writer and essayist Elsa Morante. The novel is set between Rome and the Lower Lazio during the concluding stages of World War II and tells the story of a shopkeeper named Cesira and her young daughter Rosetta who seek refuge from the capital in Ciociaria in order to escape the horrors of the war. After a long stay in Santa Eufemia where Cesira meets an intellectual man with whom she falls madly in love, the upcoming arrival of the Allies drives the women to return to Rome on the way to the Italian capital, Cesira and Rosetta are raped by a contingent of Moroccan Goumiers inside a church. And this horrible event upsets their lives forever. In the late 50s, Alberto Moravia's novel was adapted by Vittorio De Sica and Cesare Zabattini, and in 1960 became a movie produced by Carlo Ponte's cinematographic company, Champion and distributed in Italy by Titanus. Cesira's role, previously proposed to Anna Magnani, who refused it, was assigned to the young Sofia Loren, the wife of the producer, first cast to play Rosetta's role. The movie, directed by Vittorio De Sica, earned Sofia Loren several Italian and international awards, including the prestigious Academy Award in 1962 as the best leading actress. In 1988, Carlo Ponti produced a television version of La Ciocciara and entrusted the direction to Dino Risi. Lauren, 27 years later, took on the role of Cesira and Rosetta's role, which was assigned in De Sica's movie to the Neapolitan actress Eleonora Brown, was now played by American actress Sidney Margaret Penny. Dino Risi's La Ciocciara was broadcast on September 24, 1988 by CBS, the American Broadcasting Network and on the 9th and 10th of April 1989 in the early evening by Italian Channel 5. The movie was, of course, distributed almost all over the world with different titles. In 2016, the Neapolitan filmmaker Mario Salieri makes an erotic adaptation of Moravia's novel, inspired by the ruthless analysis of the author on the aspects of a society alienated by the events of war. Out of respect to all the victims of this despicable page of history, evoked in the concluding part of the novel, Salieri decides that his transposition must avoid any representation of the tragic events, and transcribes his own choice in capital characters on all promotional posters of the movie. This is not enough to prevent the launch of a heated discussion triggered by Emiliano Ciotti, president of the Moroccan Victims Association, who after having learned of the Salieri project, wrote a letter of protest addressed to the Italian Prime Minister Paolo Gentiloni. The Casa Pound, an Italian political association of fascist ideology, has risen to the defense of the Ciocciaro people's honor and threatened Salieri with retaliations, while Emilia Zarrilli, prefect of Frosinone, wishes for the sequestration of the movie. Senator Maria Spilabotte was the one to raise a dispute in a parliamentary interpolation, 
which took place in the Italian Republic Senate, while the lawyer Luciano Randazzo, already known for having reopened cases involving the foibe and execution of Benito Mussolini, threatened to take action for damages against France at the Military Tribunal of Rome. Senatrice Spilabotte. Sì, grazie Presidente. Mi dispiace intervenire proprio alla vigilia della giornata internazionale della donna, ma devo fare una pubblica denuncia perché sul eh, profilo Facebook di un certo Mario Salieri, che è diciamo, tra i più in voga, eh, tra i registri, registi più in voga del genere porno, è apparsa la eh, pubblicità, la promozione di un film intitolato La Ciociara. Emi De Sica, the daughter of director Vittorio, also threatened to lodge a complaint and asks for support from Sofia Loren and Carmen Yera, the last wife of Alberto Moravia. The media attacks against Salieri and Vladimir Luxuria in the Il Geco and La Farfalla radio broadcast cast serious charges against the Neapolitan director. Tu devi sapere che c'è purtroppo, c'è purtroppo, perché figura di ognuno può vedere i film porno, che so film d'azione, lo dico sì. sempre, a lieto fine, non c'è lieto problema. Fine. <laughs> Ma Purtroppo c'è un filone, un sì. genere di film porno che si chiama rape. Come si chiama? Rape, che vuol dire stupro. Quindi ah. praticamente loro nella trama di un film porno ci mettono proprio una scena di stupro. E fare la versione porno mm. della ciociara che appunto, racconta una storia vera. Il stupro ah. di una bambina, di una figlia stuprata davanti alla madre. It's not the first time that a movie of Salieri has stirred up intense controversy. But for the Chochara, it all happened before the movie was even released, and when no one had the opportunity to view even a single frame yet. These disputes have turned Salieri's Chochara into a huge media event, and the upcoming release of the movie is anticipated to be an unprecedented success. Io non ho più rancore e ringrazio chi me l'ha portata a me. 